example, I would say it's the distance versus time of a car. That would be the title. So on, on, our, on our graphs, that's what we should have chosen, something like that. Distance versus time of a car, or um, transmission versus distance of a car, right? Okay. Um, we need labels for the axes with, what did I say they were called? Units. Units. with units. Okay. And then the last um, thing is that if you're say you're given grid paper, like like you're going to be given grid paper on the ne on the next page, you can see, right? See graph paper. You want to if I just give you something like this, your goal is to take up about two-thirds of grid supply. So that, you know, if, if I graph this and it was just like right in the corner like this, like all my increments were like right there and all the line was just right here, that's not, that's not really good, right? But it can't be like off the page either. So it all needs to be, I would prefer, it's about you know, two thirds or a little bit more um, of the grid paper that you have. And that's where kind of making trial and error with how much your increments are will be a little tricky because you, you don't want the, well, I'll just show you. I'll do an example, okay? Um, now, have you ever heard of a line of best fit in math before? Have you heard of that? No? I will leave that for another day then. Okay. No, actually I won't. You need to learn it. Okay? The last thing, so this is kind of new then, is called a line of best fit. And it gives... Uh, what do I say? A general trend. Now, before, what you guys probably would have done is you, the way you think about it is you connect the dots, right? You make a line or whatever. That's like the line of best fit. But sometimes if the dots are a little scattered, the line of best fit won't go through every single dot. And I will show you what that will look like, okay? So we need a line of best fit. Okay, let's make a graph. Next page. Or does anyone else need a time? No? Okay. Okay, so here is our car. When we're looking just at the general speed of a car, we look at distance and time, okay? Or speed and time, okay. So we are given speed and time here. Well, it's actually accelerating then, but whatever. Okay, so say we're given speed of a car and we're given the time. So the first thing you think is, um, what is my x and what is my y? That's the first thing you think, okay? So which one is my x? You can uh, shout it out. Time, time, just because time is always, okay? So this is my x, which means it's the horizontal. And I even like to draw that in for myself because sometimes I forget. So then obviously this must be our y, which is my... Will the y always be on the left side? That is correct. Well, it would always be a vertical. If you're... Like in the table there, well, the y oh, is always... Oh, nope, definitely oh. not. No way. Um, you cannot assume that y or x is either on the left or the right as the data is represented. You have to either read the experiment or if it's time, it's always an x. Okay, so now what we're going to do is let's make our title first. So our title should always be y versus x of blah, okay? So this is speed versus time of a car, 
We're not told anything more about the car. It's just a car, okay? I don't know if it's a Lamborghini or what, okay? So, next we label our axes, okay? So, on the Y side is speed, and we put it in meters per second, because that's the units we were given. You can write it like this way if you want. It doesn't matter to me. And then we will put on the bottom time in seconds. Okay. Okay, so we've got our title, we've got our axes, we've got our units. Now you decide what your increments are and you put them in, okay? So now this can be kind of a harder one. So you look at your time and you say, okay, I'm going from 1 to 7. So I need to be able to fit all that data in, but I don't want the 7 to be the last line. Please don't do that. Mm -mm. So I want the 7 to be, you know, a little bit further in, okay? And um, then my speed, I need to go from 10 to 70. So you know what? The way that the data is laid out, it looks like it would be great to just go up by 1s for this data and up by 10s for this data. That would make it pretty simple, right? I don't think I need to change anything like that. So what I decided is I said, okay, maybe one, two, three. Three boxes will give me a, a one, okay? You can decide, it could be one box, it could be two boxes, it could be four boxes. You just need to make sure you fit everything in, okay? So now every one, two, three, I go up by another. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, that worked out well. I was able to go all the way up to seven. I didn't, I wasn't like crammed in, but I wasn't off the page. If I would have gone less than three boxes, it would have maybe been too little. And if I would have gone more, I would have ran out of space, okay? So now for my 10 to 70, I chose to do two boxes, okay? So I go one, two boxes is 10. One, two is 20. One, two, and sometimes you get a little squish there with your axes labels, but that's okay. Okay, if I would have chosen three boxes for that, that probably would have been okay too. I would have been a little bit more spread out. That would have been fine. That would have been nice, but um, it's okay. All right, so now you can plot your data. So what you do is you look at your first line. So your first line says time is one and speed is 10. So you go to one, that's my X value, and my speed 10. So you put a dot there, okay? Then your next plot is two and 20. Obviously, there is a very uniform pattern with this data, so it's a little easier to plot. So you can just continue going. Do we have to put a zero? Like, no, you don't have to put a zero, but it is not incorrect if you do. Or it is correct if you still put a zero. <laughs> okay, so 4 and 40, 5 and 50, 6 and 60, 7 and 70. And you Yes, so that would be our very last step, is connecting the dots, but instead of saying connect the dots, I would like to use the terminology, the line of best fit, okay? So the line of best fit is to show the general trend, which in this case, the general trend is very uniform, so it means connecting the dots, okay? So we can connect the dots. Now, it is great if you have a ruler to use a ruler, it is just looks a lot nicer and tidier. I do have rulers in here as well if you would care to use one. But for physics, our physics unit in science, it's great if you bring a ruler. Okay. Okay, so that graph is done. Yay, we did it. Any questions about this? Is this too slow? Or am I going too fast? Like, Sometimes it's hard for me knowing what you have done in junior high and how much you've understood, so I'm kind of trying to make sure we're all on the same page. 
But if, I, if, if I'm like going to slow, just be like, hey, pick it up. You can tell me that. But doing okay here? Yeah. Okay, that, that was mine that I did before. Okay, so let's do another one. Okay, so now plot a graph of this data of this car's movement. What is different? Do you need to make your axes different? So let's look at the data a little bit here. We go 10, 20, 30, 40, 44, 59, 70. Oh, okay, so it's not the exact same as before, but I still go from 10 to 70. Do I make the same increments or should I change it? Yeah, totally, right? Even though the data isn't exactly uniform, my increments always need to stay uniform. Do you see the difference? Your data can be all over the map, but your increments have to go up by a very specific amount, okay? You can't just pick for them to be, like you can't just go 40 to 44 for your increments. Anyway, so you can start, go ahead of me if you want, and put in your title, do all, all of the, the, the title, the axes, and all of the increments are all the same as the ones just before. So you go right ahead and you work on that while I do the same. Okay, so just peek up here for a moment. So this one was a little bit different because you had to kind of guess where certain numbers would be, right? You had to make an estimate, okay? So like um, where five was, you had to kind of guess where, what was it, 40 something? 44, right? So you know, okay, well that's where 45 is, so I go right a little bit under it. Okay, so, so if you have all of your plots, so can you, see, can you see mine? They're like here, here, here. Yours should be pretty similar. Now, how do you draw the line when obviously you can't just draw the line and it goes all through? That's why this is called the line of best fit. It represents the overall trend, but it can't possibly go through every line because else you would be playing connect the dots and that's not how we do it, okay? So what you do, the best way to do this, and this is why a ruler is great, because your ruler 
what you do is you kind of line up your ruler so that your ruler is as close to as many dots as possible, okay? And you just go through. Now, it does not need to go through this little butt, this like corner. It doesn't. That's called the origin. It doesn't have to go. My line of best fit could go right through there, okay? It doesn't matter where your line of best fit um, ends up. It, so don't, don't pigeonhole yourself to think it has to go through the origin. Also, just a note, if we would have had like a point all the way up here, do you think I would have taken that into account in drawing my line of best fit? No, no I would consider that as an outlier and like that there was, must have been a mistake that happened when I took that data point. But it's still an observation, so I still include it, but I don't draw, put my line of best fit like near it. I don't really care about it, okay? All right, so take a ruler or um, a straight edge, even of like a book or something that you have, and draw a line of best fit with that, with that graph, just like mine, okay? Can you rule it? Or just even the side of your calculator, it doesn't, you, you know, whatever, okay? Yeah. So well, it doesn't have to start at the zero? No, it doesn't have to start at the zero. More put it around your dots first, and then see where it ends up. So put that on your to-do list for science 10, bring a ruler, okay? Okay. So is everyone done right now? Yeah, lots of you have moved on, so that's great. Let's move on to the next one, and we're going to discuss the variables before you um, just make sure we've got it. Okay, so this is where we have to read the experiment to make sure we know what variables we're doing. So it says, an experiment was done to compare the volume of a liquid to its mass. This was the example I discussed earlier. Different amounts of liquid were poured into a container. So that's what the person is doing. That's what they're manipulating. That's what they are doing to the experiment. And the masses were measured. Okay, so that's the key is that the masses were measured. So the masses are the result. You see that? So the stuff the person did, that's the manipulated variable. Okay, so the, the, the person poured liquid. So this must be x because it's the manipulated variable. Then the person measured a mass. So the measurement is the result. So that's what they recorded. So the mass must always be the y. Okay? So now you know how to plot it. You put then the mass on this side, and you write in grams, and you have your volume, and you can just write volume. You don't have to say volume of liquid. And what was it in milliliters? Milliliters. And here we write mass versus volume of a liquid. Okay? Now you try writing out your increments. You decide how much they should go up by. You try it. And if you've already done this graph, you can go on to the next one. But just everyone try this one out. Just... Oh, sorry. Isn't that mass versus volume? Of the liquid. I put of the liquid of mass measured. You can you say that again? I said mass versus volume of mass measured. Um. Different amounts of liquid were poured into a container and masses were measured. Oh, you know what? I apologize. Really, what we should put this as is there a time to compare the volume of liquid to the Of, because it's different. No, we should just have it as mass versus volume because I don't really know. It doesn't really give you a breeze. No, we should just leave it as mass versus volume. I think that that would be better. 
Do you agree? Or do you... Yeah. Like, I think the most we could maybe add to it is in a container. Maybe that would make sense. Hey? Mass versus volume in a container. Yeah, that makes we just more leave sense. it as mass versus volume? Yeah, I think that would be fine. What is the um, x-axis label? So the x-axis is the volume in milliliters. Yeah, so try picking your own increments. chicken scratch now, that's fine. But see, I see lots of you, if, if you're, you, you try something with the increments, but then you, then you it won't fit. Can't you start doing a line and then, like, do a little scroll thing, and then do a little 50, you 60 You can, thing. but I would like you to not, because I want you to see the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a graphical reason, because then, then you can see the y-intercept, which tells you more about the graph. Yeah. Okay. So that okay. is valid, but I yeah. prefer that you Okay. Yeah, so now make your line. That's it. Yeah. So I'm going to show you mine of this graph. If you're not done, that's fine, but I'll just show you mine so then you can kind of see if you're on the right track. Okay. So this was my graph. So I have my volume at the bottom, my mass on the side, and my title at the top. Now look, see I have my plot now. It is a very straight line. I can go through all of my data points, but look where it ends up, okay? Um, it doesn't need to go through down here, okay? So I lined up my ruler so that it would go through as many points as possible, but it, it, it ended up over here. Now, oh, I just wanna tell you something, but I might not have it, I don't know. I should just tell you, yes. I need to, I like to have the doors open for like airflow, you know, just movement, but then every time anyone walks back, I should really just keep the doors closed so that I don't get angry. Okay, um, so, no, I won't, no, never mind, okay. Anyways, so that would be um, a good graph. If you went up by tens, that's fine too. 
Like if you went up like 10, 20, 30, 40, and you just went up by 10s or by 5s, that's fine. Um, as long as it fit and it went by equal increments, whatever you choose is good. Okay? If you did something different than mine, that's fine. Okay? So, <coughs> let's try one more before class is done. Okay, let's try doing the next one together. How about you try picking which one is the X and which one is the Y? Okay, so read the experiment carefully to, to see what they are changing and what they're reading or what measuring. And ask me if you think you, um, if you want some help with it. versus voltage, then add of a resistor, because we're told that the student is using a resistor, testing a resistor. It's just a, something in electricity, okay? You don't really have to know everything about what's going on in the experiment, but then it tells us a little bit more about what's going on. Good. Yes, that's great. So now choose your increments and go up. So choose your increments and try graphing it out. Mm -hmm.
If, um, so if you are done, so the next two, um, so there's, well, there's the heartbeat one and the voltage versus current one that you, I kind of let you to do on your own, right? I didn't, I didn't help you a lot with those ones besides if you asked me for help. So, um, those two will be for, um, well, I'll take them in. They'll be due on, what's today, Wednesday? Oh, we don't have, oh, yeah, we do. I keep thinking it comes like this. This will be due on Friday. So at the top of your page or at the top of the booklet, put due Friday. So if you need a little bit more help or if you have another graph to finish, you have some time tomorrow to work on it. But if you're already done and you're confident with it, you can put your name on it and put it into the hand inbox, okay? Oh, yes. Yes, that would be. I will give it to you tomorrow. Josh, yes. you put lines on all Yes, please put a line of best fit with a ruler. Oh, 